these days we don't really need the animal products to keep warm and to keep protected from the elements. We've got so many alternatives. So all those animal products in the house, they're actually really outdated. And the best news is that all the vegan materials that we need are already here. My name is Aline and I'm a vegan interior designer. So I feel like there's a lot of focus on vegan food, which is the obvious one. Um, you cut out meat and animal products out of your diet. That is a huge change and that's what people know about veganism. I find the interior design industry is lagging a little bit behind in that, just simply because it hasn't, there hasn't been a spotlight on it yet. So there's a lot of things in vegan interior design that are not vegan. Like there's the more obvious ones like leather, wool, down, feathers, silk. Um, there's also wall paint though and um, furniture glues. So there's a lot of hidden things that nobody would even start thinking about. I think the most obvious ones that people might know about or think about are like leather couches or um, duvets filled with feathers from ducks or geese. Um, that's the most obvious ones. I find the products that most of my clients are a bit surprised about are towels or toilet paper. And toilet paper is not necessarily an interior design product per se, but it's still something you use in your house every day that's in your space. Um, so that's, for example, mostly not vegan because it uses gelatin, which is made of bones and cartilage. And towels, like your normal terry towel. Even I, I only found that out relatively recently that the production of a normal towel or bathrobe is not vegan at all. It uses beeswax, it uses some different solvents and dyes that have been tested on animals or have animal parts in them. Um, yeah, there's, there's those products. And there's wall paint. It's either mostly made with casein, which comes from cow's milk or cows. And most wall paints have also been tested on animals. So there's a little bit of cruelty hiding in a lot of these everyday products that we just don't think about. Designing a vegan home or a vegan space is not so different from your normal interior design role. However, accessibility and availability, I find, is still the biggest issue when it comes to vegan interiors. There is a lot happening. A lot of materials and finishes are being developed all over the world. But it's often still quite small companies or small supplies or it's, you know, I'm located in Australia, so I have a lot of Australian clients and I find a lot of products um, that are really useful and great and suitable are only available in the United States, for example, and the UK. The products are out there. They're just not widely spread yet. I've seen a lot of um, progress and it's, it, it has ex like the products coming out for the vegan interior design world, be it wall paints or, or alternative leathers, alternative wool products um, that are vegan. They're all being developed at the moment. And it is accelerating. I, I googled Vegan Paint Australia three years ago and nothing came up. I would have had to order it from the US and it was really expensive. And then I googled it half a year later and there were two companies in Australia that are now openly marketing vegan wall paints and they're just as compatible and as like the same price, the same quality, the same choice of colors as the big commercial brands that are available. So designing a vegan household is not any more difficult or complicated than designing a traditional household. Um, if anything, it's actually, it has many benefits um, 
because it's usually healthier because vegan materials they're usually more organic and more natural so if you compare it to a household that is filled with woolen rugs or has leather couches leather chairs um, silk curtains all these products are actually not only not animal friendly because they're based on animal cruelty but they're actually really unhealthy for us leather if you think about it it's just the skin of the dead animals or many animals for that matter and animals if you leave them in nature they rot so that's their skin so in order to actually make a product out of it a material that can be used to put on a couch that lasts for years you have to add so many toxins so many chemicals and once you put that fabric on a couch those chemicals off gas and absorb into your skin they can absorb into your skin up to 20 years which is unbelievable um, so that's really unhealthy um, wool is another example a lot of people are actually allergic to the lanolin that's in wool and kids have skin issues but nobody attributes it to the actual woolen rug that the child is rolling on all day so um in a vegan household it's not only not more expensive or not any more complicated to design but it's also also much healthier vegan materials are can look just as good as the original animal products there's a lot of leather alternatives out there now that have the same look and feel as leather um, they're made of apple waste, mango waste, um, a lot of very interesting new materials, but they have the same look and feel and you won't really miss anything if you want to just replace a like for a like. Sometimes it can be hard to actually know if a product is vegan or not because in furniture we don't have those labels that you find on food packaging, for example. As a consumer, you simply have to ask the supplier or the manufacturer if the product contains any animal products. And it can be a bit tricky because as a manufacturer, people usually know what they use. They know what glues they put in the furniture, they, they know. But if it comes to a supplier who's just selling on products, they don't necessarily know and I write a lot of emails and I get a lot of evasive answers or like you know a lot of suppliers just don't know how to answer that question because they cannot trace back the whole manufacturing process so as a consumer unfortunately we still have to ask a lot of questions at the same time that actually gives us a chance to create a demand to create a movement and to actually create a change because people then have to start thinking about it suppliers need to think about other ways to produce furniture materials finishes that don't involve any animal derived products because people ask for it if if they don't need to change um, they won't but if people actually ask about ingredients and about manufacturing processes they'll have to think about it and there will have to be change there's um, a towel company in austria and um, they wanted to jump on the whole vegan trend um, and wanted to bring out one vegan towel series and they really had to do research and look into how to replace the beeswax and the dyes and everything that was actually based on animal products or animal cruelty. And then they worked out it's not more expensive to replace everything with more natural products. It's not more complicated. It doesn't take longer. And now they're changing their whole production, which is it's a 100-year-old company. It's very traditional, very old. By 2022, they committed to make everything vegan because there's no difference in price or in effort. So they say, why wouldn't we? 
So as a supplier, you've got, um, you've got the power to just look into different ways and cater for everyone rather than for just you know, the traditional world. So what you can do as an activist or as someone who wants to actually see change in this interior design industry, um, you have to change the demand. That's what we have to do. We have to create a demand so that suppliers and manufacturers are forced to look into alternatives. If there's nobody asking for it, they don't need to change. So as a consumer, as always, just like we've seen with the food movement, with fashion, if we ask for it, um, there'll be somebody bringing out a product to cater for us. So what I'm most passionate about is actually educating people because you do not know what you do not know. And um, that's one of the reasons why I started um, offering online courses. And that's also another reason why I started, by the, or why I wrote my book, because I wanted people to have a starting point, understand what's the background, what's, what, what is vegan interior design? What products are actually not vegan? And most importantly, how can I replace them? Um, you need to know what alternatives you can use if you want to make a successful transition. So um, in my book, I speak about the background of veganism, but then also adverse health, eff health effects of animal products in the house to then offer alternatives um, that are healthier for the planet, for for you and your family, and also leave animals out of it. The Hilton in London um, designed a vegan suite, and it's been hugely successful. It's been three years, I think, that it's been designed and people can actually book it. And it's vegan down to um, the ink in the pens that are um, on the desk or the toiletries. And um, it's been a huge success. And there's another vegan hotel in Greece that opened this year in 2020. Um, it's been booked out all the time because it's new, it's different, and people appreciate the effort that's been made to create this 100% vegan space. Well, the problem with materials that are traditionally used in interior design or in the house um, is, well, leather is one of the most cruel ones. People think it's a byproduct of the meat industry. Um, it's actually a really big industry in itself. Um, think. There's 1.3 billion cows murdered for just leather production every year in the world. So it's not um, cows that are eaten anyway. People think wool is a very organic and natural product and sheep need to be shorn anyway. They don't really. If we left them in nature... They would only produce the wool that they need to produce. However, we've genetically manipulated them so much that they actually now grow extra folds of skin, which grow more wool, so we can harvest more wool. And we shear them once or twice a year, which is really unnatural. Um, whereas, yeah, if we shear them in winter, they actually get cold and a lot die from frostbite. So it's not necessarily that romantic idea that the sheep are running around on on the grass all day and then we shear them when they need to be shorn anyway and we do something good for them. Um, it's a big business and if we just left them alone, they wouldn't actually need to go through that stress of being shorn and, and hurt in the process. Um, so all these traditional materials like wool, leather, which kept us warm and, and safe a hundred years ago, 
back then it was probably necessary and we used what we had and we didn't have so many alternatives. But um, so when you're at a store and you look at a beautiful wool blanket, you don't connect the dots. You don't make the connection between the animal that actually had to grow this product and has been shorn and tortured in the process. You just see the beautiful end result. And it's very hard to make the connection. Um, and you can't blame anyone for not making the connection because people just don't know and people are not supposed to know. It's just, it's all very beautiful terms, but they're just really hiding what cruelty is behind those products. When I talk about leather alternatives, um, a lot of my clients say, oh, but the faux leather, if they're made of plastic, if they're really uncomfortable and they're not the real thing. So I don't really want to replace it with that. Um, there's so many great products out there now, like this, for example, is a leather made out of mango waste or fruit waste. They have the same thickness, they have the same feel, they have the same look as leather. So if you really want to replace the same, or if you really want to recreate the same feel and look, there are products out there that aren't actually the nasty plastic from the 70s. Um, but a good quality, beautiful product um, that can be used as a really good alternative. And the best news is that all the vegan materials that we need are already here. My company is called Vegan Interior Design, um, as is my book. It's pretty straightforward. My um, website is veganinteriordesign.com and that's also where all my online courses for interior designers and non-designers are located. Um, the book is available on all major online retailers like Amazon or yeah, in any country of the world you can just order it online. And I work with clients from all over the world. Um, my interior design consultancy is international so it's all online and then the courses are accessible from all over the world as well.